Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's take a look at a diatomic molecule and try to determine the oscillation amplitude of such a molecule at the various quantum energy levels. And let's compare that to the typical bond length, the distance between the two atoms in such a diatomic molecule. And for that, let's take again the carbon monoxide molecule that has one carbon atom and one oxygen atom. And the bond length between the two, I have that written down here somewhere, up right here, that would be the equilibrium position if it was not vibrated, is 112.8 picometers, which is 0.113 nanometers. So let's find out how much the amplitude or what the amplitude is when that molecule begins to oscillate as it receives energy. Of course, in the bottom state, the E sub naught state or the zero energy state as we call it, the molecule will still be vibrating because it will still have this amount of energy, the quantum mechanic energy that it has. Even at absolute zero Kelvin, the molecule would still be vibrating with that energy. It's one half h bar omega. Now, we can also calculate the frequency of that, which is the square root of k over m, which happens to be 4.1 times 10 to the 14th per second. It's quite a bit of oscillations per second. Of course, this is radians, radians per second. And then if we then calculate h bar omega, it's about 4 times 10 to the minus 20 joules. Take half of that for the zero energy level, half of that, and convert the electron volts. It's 0.135 electron volts. And then the energy jumps from one quantum state to the next would be twice as much, or 0.27 electron volts. Now also, we have to keep in mind that we can calculate the amplitude at any quantum level or quantum number n to be equal to the square root of 2 divided by k, which is m omega squared, times the square root of the energy level at that quantum number. Or we can also, as we saw in the previous video, know that the ratio of the amplitude at any quantum level relative to the amplitude at the zero energy level is equal to the square root of the ratio of the energy at that level divided by the energy at the zero level. To get a feel of what it looks like for a real molecule, we're going to look at various quantum energy levels, 0, 1, 2, and 10. The appropriate energy level along with that, so we have E sub naught, the base energy level or the zero energy level, at the next quantum number would be 3 times as much, the next quantum number 5 times as much, and when n equals 10, it would be 21 times that amount of energy. Based upon that and based upon this ratio, we can calculate the energy at each of these various quantum states. Then we can also calculate that energy in electron volts and the appropriate amplitude at these various levels. Now, what is the percentage of that amplitude relative to the distance between the two atoms? At the energy, at the zero energy state, when the amplitude is 4.7 picometers, or 4.7 times 10 to minus 12 meters, that's 4.2% of the total distance between the two atoms. That I would call the, the um, equivalent, not the equivalent, but the equilibrium distance between the two atoms. When we jump to the next level, when n equals 1, we now have 3 times the energy. That means that the amplitude will increase by the square root of 3, or multiply by the square root of 3. That gives us now an amplitude of about 8.2 picometers, which means it's about 7.3% of the distance between the atoms. When we jump to the next level, we have now 5 times the energy, 5 times the energy that we started with. We now have an amplitude that's about 2.5 times as much as we had before, so now we're at 9.4% of the total distance between the atoms. And then if we jump all the way to the quantum state 10, of course, we can't do it all at once. We have to jump at one state at a time. Then we have 21 times the energy at the zero energy level, which means we now have an amplitude of 21.7 picometers, which is 19.2% of the total distance between the atoms. So it gives you kind of a physical feel of what the amplitude of the oscillation is relative to the distance between the two atoms. So again, that's a realistic scenario with a real molecule, the carbon monoxide molecule, and we have some good appreciation for that. Keeping in mind, of course, that the mass that we use here is what we call the reduced mass, which is the product of the mass of the carbon atom and the oxygen atom divided by the sum of the two atoms. And that gives you the equivalent reduced mass that we use in that particular oscillator. And so that's how we determine a realistic picture of what the amplitude of the oscillations are at various quantum states of the quantum mechanic oscillator, in this case, the carbon monoxide molecule.